How's it going everybody? Welcome to Biathlon University. I'm your host. My name is Brian Halligan and today we are in beautiful Soldier Hollow, Utah, home of the 2002 Olympics. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about trigger squeeze and what it means to have good trigger squeeze and also the importance of good trigger squeeze. All right, let's jump right into it. Trigger squeeze is important for two reasons and we're gonna break it up. Everything before the shot goes off and everything after the shot goes off. So before the shot goes off, that's when you first touch the trigger, you take up that little slack on the trigger and then you pull it tight until the shot breaks. Why is it important to have really good trigger squeeze during that session? It's because if you aren't pulling the trigger at the appropriate pressure, you're going to miss the shot, especially in standing. Think about it this way. As you approach the target, if your finger is not firmly on that trigger, and then as you see the black, you go to pull the trigger the rest of the way, you know in standing you're never gonna get the aperture to sit right on the target. So by the time you actually pull the trigger to where the shot breaks, you're gonna be late and you're gonna miss it. So in the first stage, it's really important to squeeze that trigger really hard and really firm, but not let the shot go off, have really good trigger control. Now let's talk about after the shot goes off. So you took a quality shot, you had good trigger squeeze. Now after the shot goes off, if you immediately let go of the trigger and you don't follow through, then you're going to have a bad shot. Follow through is super important. So after that shot breaks, hold it on the trigger just a little bit longer and then let go and move on to the re-bolt. Okay, I like to think of things in terms of graphs, so let's go consult the graph so we can visually see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is our graph. As you can see on the x-axis, we have trigger pressure, and on the bottom line, we have time. So now, when you take the shot and the shot actually fires, I like to think of that as 100% of the trigger. Now, obviously, you can pull past when the shot fires, so there is more than just that 100%, but for visual sake, let's say that the shot breaks at 100%. So here comes an athlete. They put their finger on the trigger and they start taking up the pressure. As the pressure builds, they want to get it to about 90%, so just under that 100%, and then they're going to start approaching the target. They see the target, they pull that last little 10%, and then some to where the shot breaks, and then they follow through. Remember, we talked about after the shot goes, holding on that trigger just a little bit longer. As you can see here, this athlete follows through very nicely, and then you let go and you release all the pressure on the trigger as you go to rebolt. So this right here is an example of a really good trigger squeeze. They have, they have good pressure up to that 90%. They hold as they approach the target. They take the shot, good follow through at 110%, and then they let go to rebolt. Now obviously this demonstration went pretty slow because I was explaining it as it was going through. So let's look again and see what it would look like in real time. So this athlete takes up the trigger right away, brings it right up to 90%, exhales onto the target, takes the shot, follows through, and let's go. All right, I know that was pretty quick, so let's watch it one more time. So this athlete takes up the trigger right away, brings it right up to 90%, exhales onto the target, takes the shot, follows through, and let's go. Okay, now let's go back to the graph and I'm gonna show you a couple examples of poor trigger squeezes. This first one is an example of someone who does not take the trigger up enough in the first stage. They're pretty lazy when it comes to squeezing the trigger and then when they actually do go to take the shot, you can see the pressure spikes up and then they have good follow through, but that immediate spike from about 50% up to 100% is enough that it will probably jerk their rifle off the target. This is an example of someone who has poor follow through. As you can see, their first stage is really good. They take up the trigger to 90%, but after the shot breaks, they immediately just let it go. And in doing so, they're really jerky with the trigger. And again, it'll probably be enough to move their rifle off of the target. As a coach, this is the example I see most common in athletes of all ages. Okay, and finally we have an example of someone who is brand new to biathlon and has no trigger control whatsoever. This person, the second they touch the trigger, they're going to take the shot, they pull the trigger, and then they immediately let go. 
as you can see they don't squeeze the trigger at all it really is a jerky movement all right now let's take a look at a few videos i've taken these are videos of really experienced athletes and novice athletes and masters and juniors and everything in between so let's take a look at some of these videos and let's see if we can see people executing really quality trigger squeeze and follow through all right, so this athlete looks pretty good. Really good first stage. A little bit movement there, but that's okay. Let me go again. And there's the click. You can see her finger move a little bit as she takes the shot, and I think she can use more follow through. This athlete dances around a little bit in the first stage. You can see the finger moving. But overall, I think it's okay. But again, I think it can use more follow through. Finally, we have an example here of an athlete who has a little bit of trouble in the first stage. You can see a lot of finger movement as she takes up the first stage and goes to squeeze and take the shot. Right there, you saw a lot of movement from the finger as she went to take the shot. I think her follow through is a lot better than the other two, but she can really work on the first stage. All right, guys, so that's everything you really need to know about trigger squeeze. Before the shot goes off, it's all about squeezing the trigger to that 90% and getting as close to that breaking point without letting the shot go. And then after you take the shot, making sure you're following through and you're not jerking the trigger literally off the target. If you like this video and you learned something, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe as I'm trying to come out with more Biathlon University content and just trying to get more Biathlon content on YouTube and on the internet. I really think it's an awesome sport. So if you agree with me and you love Biathlon, hit the subscribe button and I'll come out with a new video every week. But until next time, we'll see you.